Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Ackerman, the designer and creator at Kiwi Blue. I make patterns and accessories for 14 to 20 inch dolls. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you'll always know when I post new content. Today, we're going to be making steampunk goggles for our dolls. These goggles will pair with just about any of my steampunk patterns, but I made them specifically for my upcoming jetpack aviator patterns. Depending on when you're watching this, these patterns may have already been published, so check the description for a link. If you're a newsletter subscriber, you would have already received this pattern in your inbox. If you're not subscribed, you can sign up for my newsletter and the pattern will be emailed to you once you're signed up. Let's get creating. Alrighty, let's talk about supplies. So the first thing you're going to need is the pattern for the goggle side pieces. If you're a newsletter subscriber, you should have already received this. If you're not a subscriber, I'll put a link in the description below where you can sign up for my newsletter and then this pattern will be sent to you. So you just need to cut these pieces out, punch them with a hole punch or crop a dial at the little um, black circles if you want to add those details. If not, don't bother punching it. You're going to need some lids. So these ones came off of a Tetra pack of chicken broth and they're exactly the right size. They're about one inch across on the outside diameter and about three quarters of an inch on the inside diameter. So I'm going to be using these and I'm going to be cutting out the inner part and this is going to be the uh, lens holder for our goggles. Next, um, you're going to need either some leather, some vinyl, or if you don't have either of those, some craft foam that you're going to cut those side pieces out of. You need a piece that's about three inches wide by two inches high, maybe a little bit more, so you really don't need a lot. Uh, leather is going to be the easiest to use, leather or vinyl, but as I said, you can use craft foam in a pinch if you don't have any. You're just going to have to paint and treat it to make it look good. You're going to need some braided elastic. This is going to form the strap for the back of our head. If you don't like the idea of using elastic, you can certainly attach some leather straps if you'd rather. I'm just going to show you the quickest and easiest way to do this. You're going to need either a craft knife or a box cutter to cut the intersection of the lid out, so something sharp. Um, one trick you can try is sh using a knife sharpener to sharpen up your blade before you start doing the cutting. You'll need a dark pen of some sort to trace the pattern pieces onto either your foam or your leather. I recommend having some sandpaper. I've just taped a strip of 400 grit sandpaper around this dowel just to make it easy to get into this circle once I've cut the inside out just to smooth off any rough edges. We're going to be painting our lens holders. Normally I would spray paint plastic because I find it's the easiest way to get the paint on without any marks on it, but it is very cold here. So instead, I'm going to be priming these with some gesso and then using some black acrylic craft paint to paint them. And once they're fully dry, I'm going to be using my wax metallic pastes to make the lens holders look like metal. So. I generally use Rub and Buff. I'll have some links to it in the description below. There's also a couple other um, companies that make the metallic wax, like Art Alchemy. I believe I found this at Michael's or perhaps a scrapbooking store. These are great. You only need a little bit. You rub it on and it really does simulate the look of metal. I've got a paint palette. I've got some painting tools that I'm going to be using to paint those lens holders. And lastly, and this part is optional, I'm going to be using these little uh, iron-on studs to put some details on those side pieces of the goggles. This is optional, so you don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you can't find any tiny 
little studs like this. Another substitute is to just take some black cardstock, rub some of the metallic wax on it, and then punch out some holes of your whatever size you choose with a crop a dial or um, some other kind of craft punch and use those little circles that you punch out as your accent pieces. I've done that before and it works great. If you want them to be a little more 3D, you could also do the same thing with craft foam. Just um, put the metallic wax on it, punch your circles out, and put them on. Last of our supplies, I'm going to be using this uh, plastic tray to make some lenses for my goggles. You don't have to do that. I just think it looks more realistic if it's got a lens covering in that lens holder. I'm going to be using Loctite super glue to glue pieces to my lens holder. So to insert the side pieces, to put a, a bridge for the nose piece, and to glue my elastic to the sides of the goggles to hold them in place. Oh, as well as my my embellishments, I'm going to use this to glue them on. And I'm going to be using these um, Tim Holtz scissors that have a very sharp point. I'm going to be using these to cut my leather because um, it makes a really quick job of it. First thing that we need to do is cut the center out of our lids. So I'm just going to use a sharp craft blade to do that. And then once you've cut it out, it's probably going to need a bit of a sand, so that's why I've attached this sandpaper to this dowel so I can just get in there and sand it. Once you've cut that center piece out, it will remove any prongs or things that are, are sticking out the bottom as well. So go ahead and cut the centers out and be very careful not to cut your fingers, just go slowly. All right, I've got my insides cut out and smoothed and we're ready to go. You can give the plastic a good clean with soap and water. If you're concerned that it might have some grease on, just give it a clean with some rubbing alcohol as well. Once it's completely dry, you're ready to start adding the gesso. And you're just gonna wanna give it a really good coating because um, this is gonna help the acrylic paint stick to the plastic because paint does not like to stick to plastic. You can get special paints for plastic um, and that's what I usually do when I'm spray painting but um, using this gesso as a primer will definitely allow the paint to stay on the plastic. So. Okay, so I'm going to leave these to dry, and once they're dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint the black acrylic over top, and then we'll let it dry again. So my gesso's had some time to dry, and now I'm going to paint these black. And once I've painted them black, I'm going to leave them for at least an hour, because I want that paint to be good and dry. It's actually probably best if you can leave it overnight, but I'm usually not that patient, so we'll see what you can do. I'm just painting undiluted black acrylic paint onto these caps, and I'm making sure to get it on this top edge, but also I'm going to make sure I get the inner ring, because you will see that part when it's on the doll so I want it to be nice and dark and this black is just going to be a background for when we put our metallic wax on so it doesn't have to be super perfect um, but I am trying to make sure that it's completely covered and that I'm not leaving too many obvious globs or brush strokes on my caps so painted one. I'm just going to go ahead and paint this other one. I'm going to let it dry and while I'm letting it dry I'm going to be cutting out the nose piece and the lenses for these. All right while we're waiting for those to dry let's trace our pieces 
on to our foam or leather, whatever you're using. I'm just using a black ink pen to trace around. If you print the pieces out on cardstock, it makes it a little bit easier to trace around. I did not do that, so don't be like me. <laughs> The other thing is um, we're going to need to cut a nose piece out of some of this scrap here. So don't throw it away. You can use those little in-between pieces to make your nose piece. Okay, I've got these traced, so now I'm going to just go ahead and cut them out. Just cutting inside those lines I traced so I don't have any ink left on the back of my pieces. If you did it out of 2 millimeter craft foam, I would also recommend cutting with some sharp scissors. Just try and keep your blades completely vertical when you're cutting so you don't get any bevels. If you weren't able to find some lids that are exactly the same size as mine, you may need to adjust your side pieces a little bit to make them fit. So either shrinking or decreasing the percentage of the pattern. Um, another thing you can do is if they're too long, you can just trim off a little bit on the ends to make them fit. So just do a dry dry fit with the pattern piece before you cut your pieces out to know if you have to make some adjustments. You may also have to make some adjustments depending on how thick the material is that you're using for your side pieces because the pattern pieces are flat and the leather or craft foam or whatever you're using does have a greater thickness so it may not fit in to your caps all that well. You may need to do a little bit of trimming or bumping it up. So, Okay, I've got my pieces cut now. I'm going to save this to make my nose piece and the next thing that I'm going to do is punch out the holes on these and mark them on here so I can glue my little nail heads on. If you are using craft foam for your side pieces, you should go ahead and give those pieces a nice coat of black paint as well. That will just help the metallic wax to make a nicer finish on top of the craft foam. So go ahead and cut your pieces out of the foam first and then give them a, a coat of black paint and set them aside to dry as well. So I've just marked my pieces using the pattern piece. I don't know if you can see, I used a black pen, so it's a little bit tough to see the marks. I'm gonna be uh, putting my studs on and I'm gonna be using some tweezers because they are um, small and a little bit squirrely. So um, what I'm gonna do is put a drop of glue on the spot that I want the stud to go rather than on the back of the stud because I find that easier. That way the glue doesn't smear around as much. Okay. And these are hot fix studs, but I'm not going to try ironing them on because, or using my hot fix tool, because I've found that in the past it just doesn't work very well on leather and it definitely doesn't work on vinyl because it will melt the vinyl. So I'm just going to stick with good old super glue and do it that way. So I'm just going to continue putting these on until they I've filled up all the, the marks I've made and then I'm going to set them aside to dry for a while. I've got them all on now and I'm going to set them aside. I'm actually going to put something heavy on top of them just to make sure that those studs adhere really well to the leather. While I'm waiting for my paint to dry, I'm going to cut out my lenses. I've just cut a smaller piece off of that tr plastic tray so it's a little more manageable. I've got an extra cap that um, I 
cut a little weirdly, so I'm going to use this to trace around. And I'm using a dry erase marker because this will come completely off of the plastic should I get any on the part that I'm going to be using as a lens. So I'm just going to trace all the way around this cap. I've put it upside down. And I know that this is going to be too big. So I'm going to cut on the inside of this circle. And then I'm just going to check it on the inside of the cap and see if it fits and trim it down if necessary. I find it usually takes a couple of tries to get this part right so that your lens is fitting inside the cap. You basically want it to be bigger than the opening on the front of your cap but small enough to fit inside. So this is still going to be too big. It's not going to fit in there. I'm going to trim it up a little bit more. All right, I've trimmed it, and I'm going to test it in, in the cap. So it's, it's not fitting, so I just need to trim it down a little more because I basically want it to sit inside this inner rim here. So it's got to be the tiniest bit bigger than the opening, but not so big that it won't slide into the cap. So I'm just going to keep trimming this until I get it to the right size, and then I'll use this to trace another one for the second lens holder. So I was able to get a lens that fit and trace around it, so now I have two, and I'm just going to set those to the side until my lens holders are dry and I've finished putting the metallic wax on the outside of them. And now I'm going to cut the nose piece that goes in between the goggle pieces. I'm going to use a scrap that I have left over from when I was cutting those side pieces out, and you want to cut a piece that's about an inch long, and three sixteenths of an inch wide, or you could go down to one eighth if you'd like, but um, so just a little bit sturdier if you have a bigger one. Depends on your doll too. If you have a smaller doll, you might want to go more uh, towards the one eighth inch side than the three sixteenths side, just to make it look a little bit daintier. Well, I'm just using my ruler and my rotary cutter to get a little piece of leather, and this is going to attach the two sides of the goggle together, and because my lens holders aren't dry yet, I'm just going to put this to the side with my lenses, and once we finished decorating those lens holders, we'll put everything together. It's time for the rub and buff. This is one of my favorite parts. I love this stuff. So this rub and buff can separate because it does contain oil. So I just like to squeeze the tube a bunch before I open it up because sometimes it will be, will have separated a little bit. So if you just squeeze it and mash it around a little bit before you open it up, it should prevent that from happening. And I'm gonna be using a toothpick to put this on. It is kind of messy. It will come off your hands, but it takes a bit of work to clean it up. So I'm just going to use a toothpick and start, or a toothpick, a Q-tip, and start rubbing it on. And a little really does go a long way. So um, that little bit that I took on there, I should be able to cover most, if not all, of this cap with the gold and the thing about rub and buff is you put it on and then you can take a cloth so either a rag or a Kleenex or paper towel something like that and you just rub it or that's sorry you rub it on you buff it off and once you've buffed and nothing is coming off of your project anymore, then that's good and set and you don't need to do any sort of other finish on top to keep it from coming off. Once you've done the buffing stage, it's on there for good and it should not rub off any further. So, just got a little bit more on my Q-tip here. I'm not worrying about 
making sure that it's completely covered everywhere because I want a little bit of the black to show through. It makes it just look a little bit more weathered, gives it a bit of character. If it's too shiny gold, um, it's not actually going to look as realistic as if you still have some of this black paint showing through. So that's one pretty much done. I might go back and hit the front part of this a little bit more just to make the front part a little more shiny. And then once I've covered the second one, I am going to do the buffing portion and rub off whatever hasn't adhered. And then I will be ready to start assembling my goggles. All right, I've just got a scrap piece of fabric that I'm going to use to buff these pieces and make sure I'm not going to get any wax coming off in the future. And as you can see, not a lot is coming off on my cloth, and that's because I put it on pretty sparingly. Um, if you're wondering what color I was using, because there are several different versions of gold in the Rub and Buff line, I used Antique Gold for these ones. So if you want to use the same one as I used, that's what it was. And there's European Gold, which is a pretty light colored gold. There's Autumn Gold, which is actually more of a copper. So there's quite a few choices. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. They look kind of weathered, which I like since these are going to be aviator goggles to go with my Jetpack flight suit. So I'm satisfied. As you can see, there's not a lot of wax on my little scrap piece of fabric here. So I can be certain that this stuff isn't going to rub off onto fingers or dolls or doll clothes. The next step is I'm going to put the lenses into these. So I've got my caps, I've got my little fake lenses, and I've got my Loctite super glue. So I'm just going to run a bead on the inner edge here and carefully place this plastic in. Now you've got to be careful not to put too much glue or it will kind of slop out everywhere when you try and put that lens in. It's one of the reasons I like this Loctite glue. Uh, one, because it works pretty well and also because it has a fairly good applicator and you can control how much is coming out by squeezing the sides. And if I can do this properly, I won't slap glue all over the place. So, I don't know if you can see, but that fake lens is now in there. And I'm going to do the same to the other one. Just running a bit of glue to help hold that in place. And hopefully this one goes in as cleanly as the last one. And it looks like it did, but I have a little something, bit of dried paint. I'll clean that off later. So I'm going to set these aside and let them set for a little bit. And then I'm going to insert these side pieces. Okay, so it's time to put our side pieces in. The first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue along this seam here because I know that this is going to fit into my cap because I measured it. And take a little bit of that off because I've got a little bit too much. 
And now I'm going to attempt to hold these seams together until they set without gluing my fingers to them. I'm going to hold these pieces together until they set. And hopefully, not glue my fingers to them in the process. I'll set that aside for a bit and do the other one. Again, make sure to not put too much glue because it will just glob up. Oops, I've got little hole punch holes there. Keep a little rag or a Kleenex or something handy to wipe it off if you have a little excess. If you wipe with your fingers, you're just going to end up super gluing your fingers to something. So I'm just going to give these a couple minutes to set and then I'm going to glue them into the caps. Alright, so I've put one in already and I'll show you how I did that. I think it's easiest, oops, at least for me, to put the glue along the leather or the vinyl or the craft foam, whatever it is you need these side pieces out of. Again, you don't want to put too much because you don't want it to slop all over the place, but you also don't want to put too little and have it not stick. So I'm just going around the perimeter, putting glue along the bottom eighth of the edge and then I'm going to first put this wider side into my cap and then I'm going to work the rest of this in carefully so I'm not getting glue all over my fingers and then having it stick to the cap and then once it's inside just take a minute to press it up against the sides so you can make sure the glue is getting on the cap and it's going to adhere. And once that's done you now have these two sides. These wider sides are the outside edges. These inner sides are what's going to go um, in the middle and then we're going to put our little nose piece, glue it in the center once these are set and we're going to glue on our elastic for to keep the goggles in place. So I'm going to let these set for about five ten minutes to make sure that glue has got a nice good hold and then we'll come back and put the nose piece on. All right, our side pieces are firmly glued in place. So now it's time to put the nose piece on. What you need to do is make sure that these uh, thicker edges are towards the outside. And we're gonna glue our nose piece in here. Now I just happen to have some handy little grooves right here that I'm gonna use to position mine. I'm going to be gluing the nose piece in like this and like this. So I'm going to be putting the glue onto my cap rather than the leather and I'm just going to try and make sure I don't get too much but I have good coverage and I'm going to let this set up for just a minute or so till it gets really tacky and then I'm going to glue that leather in place. And then I'm going to give it um, a few minutes even after I put it on to set up. I've got my leather piece pressed, nose piece pressed on the center here. I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure to it for a few moments. And make sure that it is good and stuck. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my elastic strap for the back. For that you're going to need the doll that you're making these for just to get a good measurement and make sure that the elastic is going to be the right size. So set this aside for a moment, go grab your doll and we'll figure out how much elastic we need. All right, I'm making this particular pair of goggles for an AG doll. So 
what I'm going to do is lay them on his face and I'm going to take my elastic and just sort of measure how far I need to go. Now you want it to overlap this leather piece on the side a tiny bit because you're going to need some space to glue and you do want it to be a little bit taut so they don't slide around. So I'm going to go with that and that is about I'm going to say nine and a quarter inches long so somewhere in there should be good if you're also making yours for an American girl. This size of goggles would work well for um, a girl for all time as well so just measure as I did around your doll's head to figure out the right size and then we're going to glue the ends of these elastic to the, side, the inside of these side pieces on the goggles. Alright, so I'm going to apply a bit of glue to about 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch down on the end of this elastic here just to make sure that we get a good bond and I'm going to apply it to both ends and just let it set up for a second so it gets tacky and then we're going to push it in on the sides. Now if you'd prefer to not use elastic you could make straps out of leather or some kind of cord and just make them um, put two on make them longer so you can tie them in the back or um, if you're only going to be using your goggles for one type of doll you may be able to rig up a strap that's going to fit nicely over their head that doesn't have any elastic in it and doesn't need to be tied you might need to do a bit of an experimentation to figure out what works so I'm just pressing the elastic onto the inside of these side pieces now and once I get that in place on both sides I'm just going to hold it there for a couple of minutes so I'm just going to apply some pressure to help that glue really adhere to the inside of the leather. So far, whenever I've used this Loctite glue, it's worked really well on the leather. Some glues don't work all that well. So I will let this set and eventually once I feel that it's set for long enough, I'll just test to make sure that the joins are good both on the nose piece and on the elastic and if they are then we're all done and if they're not then I'll have to apply a little more glue and, and let it set again. You could also if you wanted to put some clips um, like wonder clips or something similar or binder clips even to hold these in place to ensure that you get a really good strong bond but otherwise our goggles are complete and ready for wear. One thing I forgot to mention is I did go back and take a small brush and just paint this back edge of the caps black because I had left it white initially and I did not like how that looked. So um, either paint that piece when you paint the rest of the cap which is the easiest thing to do or if you weren't able to paint it or you forgot to like I did then just go back in with a very fine brush and carefully paint some black acrylic along that edge just to make it blend in a little bit more when you have the white showing it's it's kind of glaring. Thanks for joining me today to make steampunk doll goggles. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed, please do so and hit the notification bell so you know when I post new content. Keep your eyes peeled because I have many more steampunk themed videos coming up in the future. Thanks, we'll see you next time.